Bring Your Own Database, also known as BYOD, lets you export data from Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations to an external Microsoft Azure SQL database. There are three main scenarios that you should consider the BYOD feature for. Exporting data from finance and operations into your own data warehouse, using analytical tools that require T-SQL access to data, and exporting data to an external database to perform batch integration with other systems. Before you implement the BYOD feature, you should be aware of the differences between the Entity Store and BYOD. For more information, see the Export Entities to Your Own Azure SQL Database topic on docs.microsoft.com. Before you can use the BYOD feature, you must configure the target Azure SQL database and then publish the data entries to update the target database schema. You must complete these steps only once. You can then export data from finance and operations to the target database on a recurring basis. The first step is to create an Azure SQL database in your own Azure subscription. In this example, an Azure SQL database that's named Demo BYOD has been created on the server that's named demobyod.database.windows.net. If you're using the BYOD feature for integration with a business intelligence tool, you should consider creating an Azure SQL Premium database to take advantage of its clustered column store indexes, also known as CCIs. A premium database and clustered column store indexes help improve the performance of read queries that are typical in analytical and reporting workloads. In Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, you can see that when the new Demo BYOD Azure SQL database is first created, it has no tables to store finance and operations data. We'll now configure the Azure SQL database in Finance and Operations. In Finance and Operations, in the Data Management Workspace, click the Configure Entity Export to Database tile. Click New to declare the new target database. Enter a unique source name, a description, and the connection string. The expected format for the connection string is described in the export entities to your own Azure SQL database topic that we mentioned earlier. We recommend that you copy the logical server name from the Azure portal. Note that the Create Clustered Column Store Indexes option optimizes the destination database for the selected queries by defining clustered column store indexes for entities that are copied from finance and operations. Currently, clustered column store indexes are supported only with Azure SQL Premium databases. Therefore, if you didn't create an Azure SQL Premium database in the Azure portal, you should set this option to No. Validate the connection string to make sure that finance and operations can connect to the target database. After you've validated the connection, click Publish. You must publish the entities before you can export them on a recurring basis. Select the data entities to publish to the target database. In this example, we'll publish the customer's V2 data entity. If you're planning to export data incrementally, make sure that change tracking is turned on for the relevant data entities. Three options are available. Select Enable Primary Table to track all changes that are made to the primary table of the entity. When changes are made to the primary table, the corresponding record is inserted into or updated in the destination database. Although data from the whole entity is written to the destination table, the system triggers the Insert or Update option only when the primary table is modified. Select Enable Entire Entity to track all changes to the entity. In other words, changes to all the tables that make up the entity. Select Enable Custom Query if you must track changes from only some of the fields, based on a query that a developer has defined. You can also select this option when the entities that will be exported were built by using a hierarchy of nested views. Currently, change tracking can't be turned on for entities that don't have unique keys. Therefore, those entities can't be exported by using incremental push. If you want to incrementally export entities, but unique keys aren't defined for them, you can extend the entities by adding keys. Click Publish again to update the schema of the target database. A Publish job is now scheduled to update the schema of the target database. When the scheduled Publish job is run, the schema in the target database is updated. Let's see the result by using Management Studio. Notice that the target database now contains the CUST Customer V2 staging table. You can also see that the CUST Customer V2 staging table doesn't yet contain any data. So far, we've published only the entity schema, not the actual data. We'll now export data to the target database. First, we'll show how to do a full push. Note that data export jobs are specific to the legal entity that they're created in. In this example, only data from the USRT company will be exported. 
In Finance and Operations, in the Data Management Workspace, click the Export tile. Enter a group name and a description. Click Add Entity to add the data entities that should be synchronized with the target database as part of this export job. In the Entity Name field, select the entity to export. In the Target Data Format field, select the source string that you configured for this database. In the Default Refresh Type field, select Full Push Only. If you don't want to run methods on the data entity as part of the export job, we recommend that you set the Skip Staging option to Yes to help improve performance. In this example, Customers V2 is the data entity that's being added, and the Demo BYOD is the target data format. Click Add. Click Export to start the data export immediately. Because we're exporting interactively, we can see the progress of the export job. To refresh the status, click the Refresh button in the upper right corner. After the export job is finished running, the Execution Summary page provides a report of the job. To verify the exported data, we created a Microsoft Power BI report that shows the location of customers. This report contains a list of customers on the right, a map that shows the location of each customer, and a chart that shows the distribution of customers by country or region. In this example, you can see that all the customers for the USRT legal entity have been synchronized. We'll now schedule a recurring job to export data to the target database incrementally. In Finance and Operations, in the Data Management Workspace, click the Export tile. Enter a group name and description. Click Add Entity to add the data entities that should be synchronized with the target database as part of this export job. In the Entity Name field, select the entity to export. In the Target Data Format field, select the source string that you configured for this database. In the Default Refresh Type field, select Incremental Push Only. Remember to set the Skip Staging option to Yes if you don't want to run methods on the data entity as part of the export job. In this example, Customers V2 is the data entity that's being added, and Demo BYOD is the target data format. Click Add. Click Export Options, and then click Export in Batch. Configure how the export job will run in the background and define the recurrence, alerts, and batch job parameters. Click OK. We'll now create a customer in Finance and Operations and verify that it's automatically synchronized with the target database. In Finance and Operations, click Accounts Receivable, click Customers, and then click All Customers. Then, on the All Customers page, click New. Fill in the information for the new test customer, and then click Save. In this example, the new customer is an organization that's named BYOD New Customer, and that's based in Iceland. After the batch job for the data export that we scheduled earlier has finished running, the new record is available in the target database. In the Power BI report, you can see that the new record for BYOD New Customer is now present. Note that the latest best practices and limitations that are related to BYOD are documented in the Export Entities to Your Own Azure SQL Database topic on docs.microsoft.com. This brings us to the end of this presentation. We hope you found the information useful. Thank you for watching.